Our lecture today, you guessed it, emphasis and focal point. Now these terms are synonymous. Neither one of them is more correct than the other. But this is where the artist wants us to look in a work of art. The idea is that an emphasis or focal point captures our attention. And if all art was like this, it would be really simple. This flower is the focal point of the work. It is right in the center of the screen. It's the only thing of that color. It's the only thing in focus. And it's real easy to identify it as the focal point. Art is so different than other forms of communication, such as reading a book. When we start to read a book, we read in the upper left-hand corner, moving from left to right, top to bottom. In an artwork, it is completely different. So we come up with different ways of creating emphasis. We have emphasis by contrast, by isolation, by scale, by placement, and then by line of sight. So emphasis by contrast. Here, the focal point is created when one element differs from all of the others. It is something that interrupts the overall pattern, therefore, it attracts our eye. So, in this great woodland scene, we've got a lot of muted greens, we've got a rich, lush background, but right in the center, we have this very bold black and white pattern of the zebra, and it interrupts the entire flow of the landscape painting. So, this is something that would be considered emphasis by contrast. The same thing here in this painting, the death of St. Bonaventura. We have the one figure at a diagonal when all of the other figures are vertical. And this work here, we have the artist's self-portrait included among all these carnival masks. Emphasis by isolation is just as easy. It's when we have a like element that's set off by itself and that grabs our attention. In the Agnew Clinic, we can definitely argue that the entire operation scene is absolutely the focal point. We've got everyone in a liar value clothing. It is right at the front of the painting and we have then the darker background behind. We have all the individuals up on the bleachers looking down, but we have this one figure, Dr. Agnew himself, set off to the left. And when we have a figure that is part of the focal point that is set off by itself, that garners more attention and he becomes the focal point through emphasis by isolation. The same thing can be said with this work, where we have Jack up on top of the hill away from all of the other pumpkins. With emphasis by scale, the largest figure or person is the most important. Sometimes this is referred to as heretic scale or hierarchical scale. And there's two places in art where this is commonly seen. The first place in early Renaissance art, art from about the 1300s. But we also see it in the art of the ancient Middle East, both in Egypt and in Mesopotamia. So here's a very common Renaissance work. It's the Enthroned Madonna and Saints by Giotto. And we can definitely see that the Madonna at the center of the work is supersized. She's like two to three times as large of any of the other figures and she's sitting down. You can imagine how gigantic she would be if she stood up. This is heretic scale or emphasis by scale. Our example from Egypt with the palette of King Narmer. King Narmer is the very first pharaoh of Egypt. He's the one that unites upper and lower Egypt under one rule around the year 3000 BC. In the image at the left, at the very top register, we see King Narmer about double the height of any of the other figures in that processional. 
On the flip side of the palette, again, we see him larger than anyone else. And here is the Stele of Naram Sin, and this work is found in the ancient Middle East. King Naram Sin is marching his troops up the Zagros Mountains in southern Iran, and you can see him as he has just speared one of the enemies through the neck, the other one begging for mercy. And he is not only on top of the, the mountain, but he's also closest to the two stars up above him, which means that he's very close to the gods. So with this work, again, he is two to three times larger than any of the other figures. This is emphasis by scale. Now, emphasis by placement is probably the easiest one to identify because it's very natural for us to immediately look toward the center of the work. So with emphasis by placement, the person or object at the center of the work is going to be the focal point. In our painting here, we can see Christ in the center of the table. And so he's going to be the focal point of the work. Now, this is, when you start to look closely at it, you begin to realize that this is a Last Supper painting, and it's unlike any other Last Supper painting that's ever been done. Most of the time, the Last Suppers are pretty solemn, they're quiet, they're sad, and they're sparsely populated. Only the apostles and Christ are present. In this painting here, the artist is Veronese, and he's one of the Venetian artists from the very late part of the Renaissance. Unfortunately, when he completed this work, the Inquisition noticed it and took offense at it, saying that Christ would never be surrounded by, quote, Germans, drunkards, and dwarves, end quote. So they made Veronese change this painting. But the problem is this painting is absolutely gigantic. It is 18 feet high, it's 42 feet wide, and that is a lot of oil paint to change. So, Veronese just simply says, hey, I made a mistake. This is not a Last Supper painting. And in the art history books, it's going to be titled Feast in the House of Levi, which is its now official name. But this was definitely a Last Supper before the name change. Christ is always going to be center at the center of the Last Supper, whether it's by Veronese or by Da Vinci or by Gerland Dio. Emphasis by placement is very important. Then we're going to move back to a term we talked about earlier on in the semester, implied line, where no physical line exists. These lines are invisible. However, they are very powerful. One of the types of implied line is called line of sight, and that is our last emphasis. Emphasis by line of sight basically says where everyone is looking, you're going to be looking there too. And so we're going to look at a couple of artworks where this is present. Even though we just talked about the enthroned Madonna and saints, in terms of emphasis by scale, and we definitely have heretic scale here, we also have emphasis by line of sight. One of the ideas behind this painting that makes this composition a success is all the angels and the saints around the throne are staring at the Madonna, and they're letting us know that we need to be looking at her as well. So that helps to emphasize the Madonna as the focal point. It's the same thing with this one here that we looked at during our lecture about lion. God's looking down, the cherubs are looking across, the apostles are looking up. We're all focusing in again on Mary. But what happens when we have a painting like this? One of my favorite works, Las Meninas by Diego Velazquez, the Spanish painter, is completed in 1656, and this is truly the family of King Philip IV of Spain. And so at this point, this is where I let my students decide on who or what is the focal point. So if you want to stop the video here for just a minute, gather your thoughts, and then we're going to move on. 
So who did you decide as the emphasis or focal point of this work? Did you decide on the little girl in the front and center of this painting? She's the prettiest one in the work. She's lighter in value and she's right in the center of the work. And here's how she looks when she gets older. Unfortunately, her life is pretty tragic. She's gonna be married off to the Prince of Austria and that's not the tragic part. The tragic part comes in is she dies during childbirth of her second child around the age of 21. Or did you decide on Jose Nieto, the Chamberlain for the Queen, who we have the most value contrast around, and he's up higher than everyone else on those stairs, either entering or exiting the room? Did you choose the painter himself at the left? Or maybe you chose the king and queen who are actually in this mirror or painting. There's a huge debate in art history as to whether or not this is a painting or a mirror. Or did you choose the dog? There's actually a scholarly paper saying that the dog is the most important figure in this work because he's closest to us. And this is also the most painted dog in art history. There are more paintings of the king and the dog than the king and the queen. Behind the dog is a dwarf named Maria, and then there's the court jester at the right with his foot on the dog's hind leg. But let's look back again at the king and queen in the mirror. And I do argue it's a mirror because if you remember back to an earlier lecture, we talked about Van Eyck's painting and that wonderful mirror along the back wall where we see not only the two occupants of the room, but we also see the artist and a priest. What's exciting about Van Eyck's painting of the Arnolfini portrait is that the person who owns this at the time happens to be the King of Spain and it's in the Royal Collection. So Velazquez would have known about this painting and I think he definitely added that bit as if to pay a little homage to Van Eyck. So the true answer to this painting, what should you put on the exam? The answer is actually a focal. A focal just means that we can't determine the focal point and this can be for a couple of reasons. Number one, because there are too many focal points, as we saw in Las Meninas. We could have argued for the king and the queen. We could have argued for the painter and Jose Nieto. And we could have argued for the little girl. We could have even argued for the women helping the little girl, the maids in waiting, because that's what the painting is titled for. Those are the Meninas. And then we also have the idea that all of those individuals in that painting have stopped and they were looking out at us. One of the reasons Las Meninas is such an important painting is that it's considered an open painting and it's one of the first ones where the focal point could actually be outside the work itself. Or a focal could also mean that the focal point can, cannot be determined, such as in the drip paintings by Jackson Pollock. Now, Las Meninas is an incredibly important work, and it inspired so many other artists, particularly Spanish artists. This is an etching by Goya. And this work is by Picasso. Salvador Dali's version. This is a photo montage by Peter Joel Whitkin. And these are real people dressed up to create a performance of Las Meninas. And here's the artwork in the Prado Museum. And just as a reminder, Jackson Pollock's works are going to be a focal as well. There is no place for the eye to rest here. So we would also call this a focal. And with that, we're going to end our presentation on emphasis and focal point.